How come it doesn't show me? Oh boy. Oh, there it goes. All right, it's catching up. <laughs> well, so long as it's caught up and there, yep. All right, everybody. So I'm sitting here talking to myself, checking things out to make sure that the live stream is working right. I always forget there's some lag from OBS to, um, to the YouTube studio for doing the live stream, but looks like we're live. Looks like we've got the right background. So, hey, <laughs> as always, welcome to the channel. And thanks for stopping by. My name is Rich Charpentier. I'm the channel host for those of you new to these live streams. And normally we're talking about building your small drone business, um, techniques, uh, different types of flights, autonomous flight, and other products and services that you can offer. Now, the last couple of weeks, I've been talking a good bit about 360 stuff, and there's a method to my madness. There's some there's some extra things going on out there. We've had some inquiries from potential clients about um, doing some more virtual tour work. So we've sat down and really dug into it. So what you're seeing up on screen right now is my Lightroom library. And we're going to talk about a bunch of experimentation that I've been doing over the past week. Because last week, I've got to say, um, while I was busy last week, what I wasn't busy doing last week was getting new calls from new, new potential clients. So throughout the whole medical crisis that's been going on, hey, from San Diego. Hi, Roseanne. Nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping by. Um, if it takes me a minute to say hi or anything to the comments over on the right-hand side, um, once again, there's a little delay and I'm between two different... Um, two different uh, screens. So anyways, last week was a little spooky because unlike what's been going on throughout the spring, I didn't really hear from any new potential contracts last week. So it could be that we're coming into the 4th of July weekend. It could be that, you know, everyone's burned out with the whole medical crisis. Um, could be a slew of reasons, but that set me to being a little nervous last week because you always need to know where your next job is coming from if you've got a small drone business or any other kind of small business for that matter. So I know that a lot of people have been impacted heavily this spring and we've kept fairly busy, which has been encouraging. But when you don't hear the phone calls coming in or the email contacts like last week, you need to start thinking about other revenue streams and other ways that you can continue being busy every single week. So we've spent a lot of time digging into um, doing more 360 virtual tours. I've played with 360 panos for years. Um, you've seen them here on channel. I've talked about how to assemble them. I've shown some WordPress plugins. Um, we've been playing with some other uh, cloud-based software packages recently. And the image that you're looking at here, this is a 360 um, done with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. And so this was an automatic uh, 360 setup with DJI's Go4 app. And they actually come out really nice. So last week I took a quick trip over to Watson Lake. That place is getting really busy right now. If you're familiar with Arizona, we've got the beautiful rock formations there. Our temperatures are always lower than Phoenix. And everybody comes up here to camp. And as far as 4th of July weekend goes, that's usually a huge event. They have parades. They have the world's oldest rodeo. A lot of stuff isn't normal this year. So while they're still talking about the fireworks displays, there are some things changing here in town because of social distancing and the whole pandemic. So what's going to happen this weekend? I don't know. What I can tell you is there's a lot of people camping over at Watson Lake Park. Um, I got in there early in the morning to do a series of 360s to put together a virtual tour of, um, of Watson Lake and uh, the Granite Dells. So I shot several, let's see here, let me see if I can get myself back over to Lightroom. So all of these things, they're all skewed and stretched and that's because they're set up for 360s. Uh, you'll notice that maybe the top third here of the image is kind of fuzzed out and stuff. That's something automatically done in the DJI software. And um, it does still look okay and if you don't let people tilt the horizon way up, they're not even gonna know that that area was, you know, filled in. So I'm just moving through a couple of these images and then we'll actually take a look. So by the way, really great cliff formations here. Um, this is a rappel wall, so you'll see people rappelling in there. 
over on the other side of the lake, there's a ton of different great climbing spots. So if you're into rock climbing like I am, um, this is an amazing location to be. So went through and just documented some of the major areas at Watson Lake Park, um, including the entrance and the camping areas and the waterfront. Uh, one of the popular things to do here is go out and kayak. So we got all that and let's go ahead and minimize and on one of my other sites, we've started building some of these new virtual tours. So, by the way, we've settled on Kula. It's K-U-U-L-A. I don't have an affiliate link or anything for them. But for the moment, doing the 360 virtual tours, we're going to be using Kula for the hosting of those tours. And um, here we go. If you pop on over to Kula and you do an explore, you can find us at AZ Drone. So every week you should be seeing a new virtual tour in our area so this does tie into our drone work and this does tie into our other imaging work and while we're doing this on you know it's our own decision to do it nobody's paying us to do some of these virtual tours i think they're going to help out down the road with us doing other community-based work and providing information about the prescott area so that's part of our rationale for why we're doing this now, let me click this, so Watson Lake virtual tour. So we're gonna go into Kula here. And so all of those images that I was flashing through on Lightroom, they have popped up in this final tour. Let's go ahead and hit the full screen thing and have a little fun here for a minute. So as you can see, I started up at the gazebo area. We've got some different little pointers to move to different locations. And this is fairly easy to set up in Kula. One of the other reasons why I've decided to go with this one and I'm actually paying them is I really do like the image quality. In testing some of the other cloud-based 360 software, some of them don't do such a great job on the image quality. Same exact image and when you put them up next to each other, um, this one's doing a great job. Another one that does a great job as far as image quality has got to be Cloud Pano. That's another fantastic one. Um, didn't go with that one yet uh, for a couple of additional reasons. I liked a few of the additional features in Kula that aren't in um, Cloud Pano yet. So we'll, we'll keep a watch on that down the road. If they add uh, some of those features, I might end up with them. So we've got the gazebo area here. So another area is down at the shore. So this is the South Shore. Um, the city of Prescott has kayak rentals there, so if you're in the area and you want to take a paddle into the rock canyons, which are way over here, that's one thing you can do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on this. This is nice and still very sharp, not a super blurry image or anything. I took this same image and I tried it out on Theasis, another one that I like. I really like all the tools in it, but the image quality just wasn't there. Hey, how's it going, CJ? Welcome to the channel this morning. Uh, thanks for stopping in. So um, just to catch up, we're talking a little bit about 360s today, doing virtual tours and adding them into some of the drone work that we're doing as well. So I've been doing a lot of testing the past couple of weeks. Jody's been doing a lot of testing the past couple of weeks. And in a few minutes, I'm going to reach over and actually show you a bunch of junk too. So we're actually looking at gear today. Holy snot rockets. <laughs> Sorry. Um, let's take a look out here. Okay, getting over the water. So this is just bringing it out. So as you can see, people can also look around uh, the other areas. There's Granite Mountain off in the distance. And we're just going to move on to the next one. One of the other things that I really, really like with uh, doing these virtual tours, we're going to be adding some of these things in for our virtual tours at downtown Prescott as well. Um, you can embed video. So yesterday I just went through and I got some B-roll from the past couple of years. Um, Watson Lake is so busy right now and over the weekend. I didn't want to go in there and do any flying or anything. There's so many people out on the water and kayaks and things. So I don't want to interfere with other people's enjoyment of um, their natural surroundings. So I said, hey, I've got a bunch of B-roll. So I'll just pull some of that B-roll together and use that as the plug -in. By the way, you're going to see a uh, hummingbird zooming around. That's a hummingbird right in there. He's going to pop up again. So he chased the drone for a little bit, actually. There's the hummingbird again. Um, if you missed that, you can rewind afterward. But so not only are we doing a 360 tour, um, not only are we doing this 360 tour, we can embed these videos to show specific areas or we can embed still images. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of versatility to this. 
Also, you can do audio overlays. So if you wanted to do a walking tour, um, maybe through a historic district or something, you can actually do voice overlays for each of the 360s or for the overall display. And a lot of these cloud-based services offer that. So, you know, you're not confined to just Kula or Cloud Piano. Most of these um, do that as well. So you can embed your videos, you can embed stills, and you can embed those audios. That's pretty awesome. So one of my favorite Canyon flights. So this was a manual flight, by the way. Um, so this wasn't an autonomous one, but uh, I took it really slow in some of the canyons just to give people an idea of the location. So the filming in here, um, it was actually three different days of video. And then we can still, you know, we close that up and we're still back on our tour. So nice and easy, very simple. And let me look over here because we do have the um, gazebo back up here. Oh, and in the distance back here, let's just zoom over there. That little thing right there is me. So I do show up in some of these, and uh, I try to stay out of the camera's way, but you know, the camera's capturing things from afar. And so one other thing, getting right up to the Northern Boat launch, I put a second video. So one of my other customers is Born to be Wild. Um, they do kayak rentals as well throughout the Prescott area, so they deliver kayaks to several places. This isn't a plug for them, I'm just saying, this is one of my clients and one of our other concepts is that we could actually offer sponsored tours for people as well because there are a lot of um, historic buildings, there are you know historic areas, some amazing recreational areas that maybe some companies serve and some companies don't. So we could actually have people sponsoring some of these virtual tours in the area. So think about that for your drone business and think about uh, specialty boutique style shops that are doing things that other people aren't. So over the winter, we did this flight and video for Born to be Wild, and um, you can find them really easy online. Just look up Born to be Wild kayak rentals, and uh, you will find them. So there's a lot of activity going on here at Watson Lake. Let's just go over to the grassy area. You want to talk about a fantastic location to do a little drone testing on the weekdays, early mornings. This place isn't as packed as at other times, especially weekends here uh, during the summer. But a great area to do some practice flight, some uh, simple control testing, you know, just to get yourself more familiar with your own drones. And then we can get right back up to that gazebo area again, which I've made kind of the center point. And we're going to be adding some other items, some other still images, and maybe one more video, because they also have a kid's playscape. They've got horseshoes, uh, bocce ball. Um, they've got two different camping areas. Um, no utilities at the camping areas, so... So it's pretty cheap, but you're not plugged in or anything. But in a self-contained RV or tenting or something, you're going to have a fine time. All right, let's escape out of that. So there's one of the things that I was doing last week. Uh, you know, like I said, still have some client work, just no new calls this week. So, you know, getting myself geared up to what else can we offer and what else can we do for folks? So we've been investigating a lot, um, a lot lately about... Uh, real estate imaging. So I've been on a learning binge. I've been shooting for well over a decade. We have been doing portrait work and landscape work for well over a decade and um, never quite moved over to full on real estate. Uh, Jody has been professionally shooting RV interiors for years. And um, with the whole medical crisis, she got laid off the other month. So so we're trying to add some additional services and bring her services and unique skills in as well. So that's why we started heavily looking into um, more real estate work. And we have been talking to some realtors as well. And we've got one who's looking to work with us. He just needs to get some new listings in and then we can go through and do some shooting for him. So we have been talking about regular still photography. We've been talking about the drone work, of course, and we've been talking about the, um, the 360s. And let's go ahead and go back. So I'm just waiting here for a minute. I'm gonna hit explore and let's explore AZ drone. So one of the other things that we've been doing is we've been working heavily on interior 360s. Um, and last year I happened to get a, okay, so I told you I was gonna show some gear here. So this is an Insta360 ONE X. This is a very cool little 360 camera. Um, I think I've had it for about a year now. 
and this does some pretty decent 360 imaging. I'm not going to say that it's fantastic because it's not. Um, when you're doing interiors with this, by the way, so I'm going to pull up this press kit. So we just did a quick walkthrough of our rental um, to play with some concepts last week and over the weekend. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, so I've run through uh, this house and I've run through several other client locations over the past year with this. And it makes for some interesting 360s. Um, and you can do 360 tours pretty easily. What's really cool about this, you drop it on a monopod or a little tripod and you can get the images captured very quickly. Uh, the camera itself will actually stitch everything together, um, blend it together for you and, and hand you a JPEG. Uh, or you can actually uh, put it in DNG mode so you can shoot camera raw and then you can do some more editing afterward. What I'm not liking about this, I've tried the DNG, you know, so raw uh, images, we've done the JPEGs, and I've got to say, you know, if you want something fast and expedient, um, this might be the absolute tool for you. What I found, though, is on all these cloud hosting services, it gets heavily pixelated if you start zooming into it and taking a look around. Um, so if you allow the people taking your tour to zoom in on the room, you're gonna find a lot of noise. So even going the camera raw route and um, assembling things through the Lightroom and then getting them into Photoshop, I was still really, really not happy with the overall image quality. And that's in Kula, that's in Cloud Pano, that was in the WordPress plugin I used. Um, you know, just not, not thrilled to pieces with the output. And so I'm just looking over to make sure I haven't missed anybody else's comments or anything. Pipe in at any time if you've got a question, please feel free to do that. So um, we used this the other weekend for doing the walkthrough down uh, on Whiskey Row and the Courthouse Square. And we've got the Courthouse Square uh, walkthrough up on Kula as well. So like I said, if you go under Explore and just do AZ Space Drone, you're going to find us. Um, when you look through that walkthrough, oh, let's just go back. We can do that. So I don't, I don't need to stay on a screen, right? Okay, historic Prescott uh, Courthouse Square. So Jody actually went out and shot this one after an event the other week. And so this looks all right. She did a good job. She's got all these different markers throughout here. Um, and this was shot with the Insta 361X. So this is looking pretty good at a distance, right? Pretty satisfactory. And then we've got Montezuma. So we've got all these different areas. But so I, I'm seeing the security um, security personnel on the Courthouse Square here. And so I just noticed him and I'm zooming in. He's super, super pixelated. And we actually limited the zoom range on this one because we were noticing how heavily pixelated things are when you start zooming in. And so we were disappointed with that because we want to you know, really show off the area and give people an enjoyable, um, enjoyable experience. When it's zoomed back out, it looks pretty good and it's passable. It looks fantastic on an iPad, on... Um, on a Galaxy tab, on my iPhone, it really looks good. So satisfied there. But if someone's taking a virtual tour, um, you know, because of the medical stuff going on right now and they want to, there's they're practicing that social distancing, I get it. But maybe you want to plan some trips down the road for when this crisis passes so you can do some tour planning. So we're trying to provide something that's high quality and interesting to people who go check these out. So the Insta360, while it's quick and easy um, to get the images captured, I'm just not satisfied with our editing range. So doing a lot more reading and um, reading from some of the guys that I've been following along with, both uh, Rich Baum and Nathan Cool, um, you know, learning a lot more about real estate stuff from them, I found that Nathan had some pretty cool stuff to say about 360s. And I'd been on the fence about a couple of things that he'd been talking about. Number one, everyone's talking about the Ricoh Theta Z1, which isn't available still. Uh, it's back ordered everywhere. That's a thousand dollars, and it's kind of similar to this right here. So you know, it's a it's a little cam that will do your 360s, and um, that one is much higher quality. It runs for a thousand dollars, and you know, if it's usable and it helps get you clients then you know it's worth the investment 
But in the meantime, what I was realizing as I was looking at all these different 360 panos is the super high-end ones that are super crisp and sharp and incredible, just mind-blowing. And what it comes down to is a lot of those were shot with DSLRs. And so I've got DSLRs. I've got a 5D Mark II. We've got a couple of 70s. I used to have a 40D, which was my absolute favorite camera. And it met a horrible, untimely death in West Virginia back in 2012 or 2013. And it landed face down, jamming my favorite 50 millimeter prime lens into it as well. So destroyed a favorite lens and a favorite camera, all because I forgot to snap a snap. Um, always make sure you close up your camera bags. <laughs> so that, that was the only horrible incident with camera death that I've ever had. But um, yeah, so I've got these DSLRs from doing all the landscape work and the portraiture work and the weddings that we used to do. And um, mostly these things have been collecting mothballs. But, so let's make sure that this is on screen. Um, this is my 7D. It's not a Mark II. It's not a Mark anything. It's the old 7D. And um, this one I've always found to have a bit of a noisy sensor as well um, in low light situations, unlike my 5D Mark II, which was always super clean. So that's also in the camera bag. But um, I made the decision to uh, go ahead and purchase something uh, the other week. So using DSLRs to do 360 panos is something really different. So you don't just go out and shoot it handheld. You're not just putting it on top of a regular tripod because you're going to have issues that the lens is further away from the tripod. You're going to have stitching issues. But in the end, after a lot of research um, and reading through Nathan Cool's latest book on doing 360 tours, um, thank you, Nathan, by the way, awesome book. It was well worth my expenditure. And no, I don't have affiliate links for uh, any of these folks I'm talking about, so I'm recommending them because I've gotten valuable information from them. And one of the things that I learned about, and this is a weird giant hunk of metal here, um, is this is the Nodal Ninja 6. And so this sits on top of the tripod, rotates around the tripod. You put your DSLR into here, it actually locks in very nicely and tight. And you can actually have the lens basically at that same center point as you're moving around a room or moving around an outdoor area. And this is going to help you achieve some pretty amazing results. So we've been doing a lot of testing since this came in. And it only came in last week. So every day since it's come in, we've been testing on it. And we have been blown away. So we will be redoing this courthouse virtual tour. I know you say, wow, that's some time consuming stuff there, Rich. Yeah, but I want it to look cool. So, so there you go. But um, with this setup, we have been doing some interior work over the week, and the difference is night and day. So I've gone through and shot this place with the Insta360, and last week we had the opportunity to go through and shoot um, with the Nodal Ninja and the 7D and a uh, handy-dandy 8mm fisheye lens. You can use other lenses for this, too. You do not have to do the fisheye lens, but you're going to have to do more brackets. So... What we've been doing over the weekend is with the um, camera and the 8mm on this particular bracket, um, we have done imaging every 90 degrees. So we start at 0, 90, 180, 270, back to 0, and then we shoot the ceiling for tying the ceiling together as well so that people can see these lovely ceiling fans that are in all of the homes in Arizona. But... Um, the flexibility with the DSLR is amazing. So what's right behind me as well, um, and you're not going to see it very well because it's got a green body and I'm on a green screen. Um, this is an Alien B800. So I've got a couple of these from when I was doing studio work and outdoor portraiture. So we've got some huge soft boxes, all that fun stuff. And um, so we've been using the Alien B uh, last week and over the weekend to light some of these shots using um, what's called flambient so it's a flash ambient blend so we've been getting really technical with doing these 360s where you take a normal exposure and then you take another exposure with flash and then you take another exposure if you would like to do window pulls it's complicated and it's definitely way more time consuming 
than the Insta360 ONE X or the Theta Z or any of the other, you know, all 360 all the time cameras. Um, doing this DSLR journey has been very, very time consuming and not complaining as we're learning this, getting ideas of other methods for shooting in private residences as well. So let's get back to explore here and let's take a look at one of the things that we put together last week. So Jody assembled this one. And um, by the way, if you're ever wondering, Jody's real. <laughs> She just doesn't want to be on camera at all. And it's taken me a while to get used to this as well. So she was playing with this tour. So here we are again, Kula. Image number one is from me and the drone. I thought, you know, it'd be interesting to give people a flavor for the area they're in. And then I'm just swinging this around. You can actually get a feel for the neighborhood. And I'm doing this rapidly, so sorry about that. Um, I hope I didn't just make you motion sick. Oh. One of my sisters checked out one of these and she said, it's spinning too fast. It's making me motion sick. So we're going to go into the living room here. So the image that you're seeing, this is pretty color accurate. One of the things that really drives me nuts as I've been looking through more and more real estate photography is the overcooked, super oversaturated um, images. Um, we have a family member who's been house hunting. So they've been taking virtual tours. They've been looking at images um, online. And so they're running into a lot of HDR images, high dynamic range images. They're running into a lot of stuff that's super overcooked, that the colors aren't the colors, that they walk into the house and they're like, the cabinets weren't that color at all online. You know, these are tan and those were whatever color. So I wanted to get as realistic as possible when it comes to color quality. And so that's when you're getting into your digital SLRs and when you start doing a lot of stuff in RAW. Um, so if, if you've been doing a lot of camera work for years, um, you know, working in raw is the way to go. Landscapes, portraiture, whatever, you name it. Um, working in raw and working in manual, those are the two major things that I've learned over the years. And if you'd like to hear more about um, photography stuff, we can do other classes on Lightroom and things. So you just let me know and I'd be happy to. But okay, so we're looking at this one. So how did this come together? Well, this is actually three photographs. Um, so we had the nodal ninja bracket set up with the Canon 7D with the eight millimeter lens. And I was doing an image every 90 degrees. And so what we would do is the first initial shot just to get the ambient in. And if you wanna learn a lot more about this, go check out Nathan Cool, go check out Rich Baum. Both of them are on, um, on YouTube and they have fantastic explanations. They've got so many video walkthroughs of how they do flash ambient work. So what we did here was an ambient shot, then we dropped the, um, then we dropped the exposure a bit, and we did a shot with the Alien B supplementing some of the light to also help us even out white balance issues. And then finally, we also went for a window pull because in this, you can actually see the landscape outside of the window. Now, in a normal shot, if you're just taking one still image, that would be completely blown out. You would not see what's going on in there. It's, it's a mess. And um, so if you're just doing a single exposure, you're going to lose out because the room we're in, this living room is a super dark living room. Seriously, it's like a cave. Um, whoever you know planned this particular house did a lousy job on thinking about light in the building. I know it's Arizona. We don't want to heat the house up, but... The living room is a dark dungeon and it makes me very sad to sit out there. So we need more lights in there. Um, so anyways, we did these three shots. We blended them together. So in blending them together, so we've got three photos at zero, three photos at 90, three photos at 270, and three photos back at, uh, at zero looking up, right? So that's a lot of images. So you end up handling a lot of images to get this, but I was very satisfied with, um, you know, we're still practicing with this, but I'm very satisfied with the color quality. Let's hit the master bedroom. That was one of the toughest ones. A lot of fixing had to go on in here. Um, and some things just couldn't be fixed very well because, you know, we could spend a lot of time on this area right here. That was a problemed area. What was interesting is we found all the different areas where paint colors were different. You couldn't tell in the dark rooms, but how extremely different paint colors were. There was a lot of touch up on these walls, so the, the property owners 
had done touch up in here and we had to go brush all of it out because it wasn't the same color. So that was just absolutely nightmarish. One thing I wanna do, I'm just zooming in here. So this was done with the digital SLR and I'm doing this for a reason. This is not pixelated. So I don't know how it's coming across on YouTube, but let me tell you on this screen, this is not a pixelated mess or anything. The bathroom was such a tight location that we went ahead and used the Insta360 in there. And we put it on HDR mode, so it did an automatic HDR, um, just because I wanted to put something in here and I hadn't figured out yet how we could set up the tripod with that nodal ninja bracket. It gets to be such a big footprint, and this is still a very narrow bathroom. So we use the Insta360 to supplement this. And if we keep the zooming to a minimum, this looks okay, it's passable. But when I zoom in here, wow, is the door pixelated. I mean, when I get in here, this is not sharp. This is really noisy. This is very pixelated. And now I know you're saying to yourself, but Rich, there's denoise in Lightroom, and you can, you know, there are several techniques. Absolutely, you're right. I can clean this up a little more, but still, it's going to be a very soft image in the end. It's not going to look great. Hey, K Clicks, thanks. Good to see you again. So, um, yeah, we got a couple people on channel, and if I'm boring you guys, just let me know. So, <laughs> but so, anyways, um, the the Insta360 gives me something passable, and if people are just zipping through the tour, okay, they might not notice it, or they might notice and go, "Wow, Rich was lazy and sloppy." And um, hey, Jody set this one up, so go ahead and blame her. No, I'm kidding. All right, let me rotate on out of here. Let's go back out into the living room because this is one of the ones I really want to show you. So once again, um, three photos shot every 90 degrees plus one set of three photos shot at the ceiling. So we did an ambient exposure, then we actually dropped the exposure, filled with some flash to get some of that white balance cleared up. And then finally we did an extreme underexposure to pull in those windows. So this came out pretty nice, and, and there are some edit issues that I'm seeing in here, um, some mistakes that we have made. I'm not satisfied with um, these center cabinets right here. So they're a little darker than they should be. One of the things I will say um, using other techniques, when you get in here, so not only is the living room just a dungeon and miserable and dark and uh, just makes my heart break, this corner right here in the kitchen is perpetually dark, even with the windows right over there. It's just this crazy vortex where light goes to die. And, um, you know, in other areas, you know, like at the front of this island here, that's really the color quality in there. So, so I'm still a little disappointed with this. And by the way, the wall, that's, that wall color is pretty accurate. Now you're going to look here and say, well, that's a little washed out, Rich. Yeah, there was a flash there. So on one of my photos, I had a flash that was bouncing off of there. I can clean that up some more too. We're just doing some testing right now, like I said. So, um, you know, testing and experimentation should be part of your routine with your drone and your regular photography, because it's going to become second nature to you. And like I said, I'm, you know, I'm learning this flash ambient technique. I'm really having a lot of fun with it. And I'm happy that the alien bees have come out. One other thing I should note, so both Rich Baum and Nathan Cool on their channels, they're running around with some very interesting lighting uh, materials, so they've got some very cool lights, and, you know, I'd, I'd love to have them too, but they're really, you know, starting at some of the lower end ones, you're looking at $500 for a strobe with a battery built in, um, going up to $1,000 with the batteries built in. The Alien Bees are very old school, this is all pretty much analog. Um, on the side of it and on my 7D, I use radio poppers. So this is a little wireless transmitter. You've probably heard of radio poppers. You probably haven't seen this one around in a while because it's so freaking old um, and it still works. So I've got a radio popper receiver on this Alien B. I've got another one on my other Alien B. I've got a couple of triggers as well. So with these, I can wirelessly control my Alien B and I can um, do this flash ambient blending. I would love that smaller flash that Nathan Cool shows off in so many of his videos, but I already have something. So do I need to go out and buy something new? It makes things a little more convenient, absolutely. But do I need it? You know, I already spent money on the Nodal Ninja. You know, you don't want to go on a spending spree. So use what you can. Um, 
down below the Alien B, I also have a portable power pack for it. So I do have a lithium ion, ion power pack. Um, the company that makes the Alien Bs is Paul C. Buff. And I would not recommend grabbing one of these specifically for doing interiors and real estate. Um, you can do it if you want to. It's not as convenient. I definitely would like one of these kind of gun grip style um, flashes um, that they keep showing off on their videos. But the expense is there. And I've already got an investment in the equipment. But this does get bulky and it gets in the way. And down on the bottom of the stand, I have my portable power pack hooked up to it. So it's kind of heavy moving this thing around. So it's not super convenient. It's not a one person show easily. You can still do it, but it's not easy. Um, so yeah, at some point I would love to get one of the other, uh, one of the other lights that they've been showing. And uh, let's just rotate back around to that pretty spot. So there you go. We're also going to talk about another thing in a minute. So all of this, all of this interior stuff has been flash ambient setups and then stitching them all together. Incredibly enough, I own PT GUI. That's P-T-G-U-I. It's an amazing stitching software package and I've owned it for years. So I didn't run out and buy PT GUI because of this. I had already purchased PT GUI years ago for doing drone work when they didn't have all the great automa automatic settings to get away with. Um, I'm gonna click on the two of the backyard really fast. So this is, um, this is one more image outside. So this one wasn't the flash ambient blend. So this was just, um, this was just some straight shots and actually we did um, a little bit of blending with these things uh, when we did uh, exposure changes. But so we can zoom in, we can zoom out, we can go back out to that front yard area if we want to. And so there you go. That is the flash ambient stuff. Now, you can also do this another way. So if you're using a DSLR, the other thing that you could think about is HDR photography, high dynamic range photography. Doing HDR means, hey, I don't have to lug this light around in that big battery pack and all these sticks. Um, I can do HDR. And for those of you who followed for a long time, I've been a big fan of HDR since it was really first becoming popularized, uh, 2006, 2007. Um, that's back in the day when, you know, there weren't many people doing HDR. And of course, you know, stuck in customs, um, he started really getting into it. I followed very closely and I had some fun doing some pretty extreme HDRs over the years. Uh, let's close that menu. And um, then I also had some fun doing some extremely realistic HDRs as well. And I've been noticing when we're looking at all this real estate stuff, I have been noticing, you know, that there is a lot of HDR out there and a lot of it's overcooked. And so that's what I don't like. And that's just personal preference. But, you know, as we've, uh, as our relatives been here um, house hunting and showing us on their tablet, hey, look at this house interior. And I look at it and I go, that's not the real windows. That's not the real color of the building. And then we've gone into the buildings with them and it's like, wow, you know, it looked like you had white walls in here, but you got blue walls in here. What's going on? Um, a lot of heavy editing, you know, while people go, yeah, that's kind of cool. Hey, super, super heavily editing stuff doesn't give people a realistic idea of the house that they're going to look at. So you're kind of impacting a potential buyer by not representing what it really looks like in that house. So like I said, when we were doing the walkthrough of this house, that, that golden tan paint color in the living room and kitchen, yeah, it's really there. It's hideous. I don't like it. And the images that I've been showing you represent it pretty well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hit my G key here. So here we are in Lightroom as always for my image management. I love Lightroom. Um, let me open this one up. So this was another experiment yesterday. Um, this is not using the flash ambient blending. This is using um, an HDR methodology. So in the case of this one, once again, I'm shooting every 90 degrees and I'm taking a series of three photos. What's very interesting with how PT GUI interacts with all this when it's all said and done is that once you pick your starting exposure, so remember we had that super, super bright kitchen, right? Um, once you pick your initial exposure on that first frame, on that first part of your piano, when you're moving to the next part, you are not adjusting your shutter speed or anything. You need to go with those initial settings. Otherwise, PT GUI 
gets sick. It says, no, I don't want to do this. I'm not your friend and I'm not working with you. Seriously, um, you have to keep the same um, shutter speed each time. It will actually complain and say, hey, the exposure values are different if you're trying to move things around. And it will tell you, I'm not doing this for you. So it's a, it's a, it's a very mean program in some ways. So that is a blended TIFF using PT GUI. And um, here we go. I also had it send out the unblended. So if we were just doing a normal exposure pointing in this direction, this is what the image would look like. So if we weren't playing with HDR or doing flash ambient or anything, this is what you'd get. This is terrible. You Sure, you can bump things up, you can increase the exposure, but now you're going to be introducing a lot of noise and garbage. What's interesting though, PT GUI, one of the things that it lets you do is um, it lets you export the three different layers at your three different exposures. So here's the extremely overexposed. So this is from one shoot still. So there's the extremely underexposed to try to get some of the detail out of the windows. And there's the midline. If the camera had its way, it would be giving us something like this, which is not good either. So we can actually throw all of these things together and we can then throw them into PT GUI. So we're going to give you a sample. I'm going to minimize this here. And I made a special export folder. So I'm skipping a couple of steps in this um, as I'm just showing you through what we've been doing. But um, basically, you know, what you're going to do is, you know, every 90 degrees, you're going to take three photos. It's either going to be with flash and ambient or it's going to be you know, exposure bracketing on your camera where you do an underexposed, an overexposed, and a properly exposed, and you blend them together. So I am, I'm just dragging this one over. So I've got a folder on the other screen for you. And um, there it is, it's labeled HDR testing. And uh, I don't know why my little pinwheel of doom was spinning there. So this might get upsetting to, um, <laughs> to my computer. So if anything slows down or anything, I do apologize in advance. Uh, my iMac more and more just feels like it's overtaxed all the time, and it's it's not a super old one. All right, so here's PT GUI Pro, which we bought, I think, in 2017. And check it out. We've got this little uh, load some images. So I'm going to drag this back over to the other screen, get out of your way, but I'm going to drag these images in. So in this case, we've got... Let's, wait for that right there all right let's go ahead and drag these on in so it's asking me it needs to know what lens i'm using because i'm using a generic lens so the the eight millimeter lens that i'm using is the rokinon i i'm probably pronouncing it wrong but it's an eight millimeter and so a generic fisheye lens and i'm going to tell it okay now PT GUI is going to start getting ready with this and the PT GUI window has changed a lot over the years so some pretty awesome stuff. Uh, I have an option to enable HDR mode so I shot for HDR in the kitchen and I'm going to go ahead and enable HDR mode and I'm going so it's giving, giving me a couple options enable HDR mode and link the bracketed exposures uh, enable HDR mode but don't link the images um, I'm going to go ahead with their recommended way. So the first one, enable it, and we're going to go with Exposure Fusion. I've also tried out True HDR, kind of weird, kind of nifty, and I'm going to say OK to this. So now it knows, look at this, it went from 15 to now it stacked all these for me. So we've got the 0, we've got 90, we've got the um, 180, and let me see, <laughs> numbers today. 0, 90, 180, 270, back to 0, and we're shooting at the ceiling. There you go. Um, now I can talk again. Let's go ahead and minimize that one. So I was looking over off screen. So the next thing that I'm going to do is align the images. And so, like I said, once I've set my exposure for the first part of the room, we're going to be keeping those exposure values the same across the board. So we are going to have some darker areas, and we are going to have some brighter areas. What's really cool here at PT GUI, and this is going to take a moment because we're running OBS, we're running Lightroom, um, we just have too many things running. So maybe I'll turn up Lightroom, I'm not sure. Yeah, this is going to start crying in a minute. It will do it. I already tested this beforehand. There you go. All right, there it is. So um, 
there we go, it's still kind of filling in. But this is giving you an idea. So here's the fusion of overexposed, underexposed, and properly exposed. The one thing you're really gonna notice is, oh, the light out the windows, we didn't do as well as that flash ambient blend, which, you know, definitely a much higher end technique. This gives us a good, honest view of what's happening in here. Um, this is a darker room over here on this side. And like I said, that kitchen area, even with these windows, that corner is just always a shadow monster. Just cannot stand it. But so we've now put these together. What I could do is export this as a TIFF and then go into Photoshop and do some more editing to, to enhance it a little more. Maybe we could get a little more detail out of the windows. Maybe if I was a smart guy, I would have exposed for the windows. So my first shot on the, um, on the Nodal Ninja here, first shot at zero degrees would have been right into um, these windows. Now, I wanted a little more light in the other room, so I made a decision. Actually, I started shooting toward those cabinets. So I exposed for the cabinets. Sorry, I'm having a dry throat here. Give me one sec just for a quick little sip. All right. So anyways, if I had exposed for this brighter area, if that was my starting exposure when I was setting the HDR up, um, when I got to the darker areas, they would be much darker. So we wouldn't have all the detail in the living room with that couch and the den area in the back. It'd be a lot darker back in there um, if I had exposed for the window. So, you know, we're making a choice, you know, what do we want to accentuate and highlight? And like I said, in the end, some editing is going to happen to this as well. We want to get the white balance a little better. And like I said before, um, you can see these walls are absolutely this hideous color. So I guess it's just, I guess you could call it a Southwest color, but I don't know. It's almost got this gold sheen to it sometimes. And I'm just not a fan. All right, so what I can do here, let's go to the project assistant and I can create the panorama. And so there's some other really cool things that we can do here. Number one, I'm gonna make this a TIFF because I still have some editing to do. Number two, it's 14,000 pixels and that's just crazy. So I'm gonna reduce this down to 6,000 by 3,000. And we're gonna go ahead and do this at 16 bits per channel. And so now I can do, read right here, see where my mouse is, there it goes, exposure fused panorama. So we can export this final fusion that we've got and then we can go edit it. But there's another option for us too, blend planes. So what's that mean? It means that it's gonna export each of those exposures. So our, we're gonna have that whole area that was underexposed, that whole area that was properly exposed, and that whole area that was overexposed. You could take those three panos and throw them into something like Photomatix or Aurora HDR or even Lightroom's little light HDR-like thing, um, giving you even more room to edit. So I'm, I can go ahead and hit uh, Create the Panorama. So it's doing that right now. So it's gonna take a moment and you know these, uh, these are not small files. So I'm just dragging this over. Look at uh, kitchen number one here. Um, kitchen number one is 107.5 megabytes. These get huge. So if we're not going right to JPEG for the presentation and we're setting things up for editing, we're gonna have some big files and that's just the reality of it. And that's always been the reality of doing HDR or anything like it. So, um, all right, starting to run out of time, but I, I wanted to show you all so what we've been working on. I also wanted to say, you know, if your business is a little slower, you know, there's always the opportunity for make work. Uh, you can spend more time learning about uh, your cameras, your drones, uh, different techniques. Uh, you can also create projects for yourself that you can use down the road for advertising. With, um, with potential clients. So, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Um, so if the phone's a little quiet for you, um, find something else to do. Do a little bit of reading, go take a walk, or focus on areas in your business that you feel a little weak on or that you'd like to know more about. So we're just waiting for, okay, finish that output. So what I wanna look at here, let's go ahead and terminate PT GUI. Goodbye, PT GUI, don't save. Um, I already saved this elsewhere. And as a matter of fact, we're going to go ahead because 
Lightroom seems to like to eat memory lately since the last couple of updates from Adobe. I don't appreciate that. So I remember working on much slower systems doing the same exact things in, um, in Lightroom and it just seems to be becoming more and more top heavy. Now what I want you to see here, so we've got, uh, we've got the kitchen, the full panorama blend here. So that's what we saw on the screen. And then we've got these three. We've got a zero, a one, and a two. And uh, one's very underexposed, one is properly exposed, and one is super overexposed. I'm gonna select these three, and I'm gonna drag them down to, hello, Aurora. So I'm gonna bring them down to Aurora HDR, and I've already experimented with this. Aurora overcooks stuff a lot, and you really gotta dial things back from their presets. And um, so this is just an example. We could also do photomatics here. But so those TIFFs that were exported by PT GUI of over, under, and proper that were completely seamed together panos, there they are. Look at that. It's our seamed together panos. Um, we're going to go with auto alignment here. Uh, we're not having any ghosting, but I am going to make sure to uh, eliminate chromatic aberrations. So let's go ahead and create the HDR. This is going to take a few moments, but I just wanted to show you. So what came out of PT GUI? that individual TIFF that PT GUI blended for me seems to be what I'm leaning toward for realistic pianos in those rooms if I'm gonna do HDR. Um, once I bring it into Photoshop, you know, we can adjust the exposure, we can adjust the highlights, we can do some good things to improve it a little bit while not making it cartoonish. Now, here we are, this is uh, Aurora HDR. And number one, I can already see, you know, our white balance it was not great from the get-go. So we're probably going to have to work on some white balance. And this is just it right out of there. So let's look at that before and after. So this is the blend. And then this is already something that Aurora has done for us. They do have some architectural things. So they got a realistic exterior, a realistic interior, which is not realistic. Um, I'm going to double-click this just so you can have a look. And the floor tiles do not have that much definition in them. These floor tiles look like, you know, wow, they, they've, they're they they super edgy and they're super, super detailed. No, this is part of that HDR technique that, I'm, that I was saying where it's roughing things up a little bit and it's not feeling as realistic about, you know, the flavor of the room. So let's go to bright interior, maybe that one. Oh, wow. So that changes up here. It's even more texture. Wow. How about a balanced interior, maybe? Okay, balanced interior is giving me a starting point here. So I'm okay with that one. But there's definitely some cleanup that we'd need to do. And there's a ton of features, you know, the HDR basic and everything in here. Um, so you can add more texture, remove texture, you know, you can go nuts in HDR. Um, in the case of doing this work, we're trying to help somebody sell a house, so we want to make this as accurate a representation as possible for the home buyers who are sitting down looking at these virtual tours, and then they finally make the decision, yeah, let's go look at that house, and they get into the house and they go, oh, this is nothing like what I saw online. So we want to avoid that moment. So blending the HDR is very interesting, and there's some possibilities there. Let me just go grab that white balance dropper just because, boop. All right, just a little bit different. Um, I'd want to cool that off just a bit more, actually. So, and I'm noticing a couple other things on. But so this is where experimentation and playing around happens. But bottom line, so you know, we are doing more of the 360 work. We're using the drones. Um, we're using the little Insta 360 One X. And now we're using uh, portable lighting equipment, a digital SLR, and a super heavy, cool bracket that you could, you, know, you could hurt somebody with this thing. That's heavy. Um, and so I'm happy to say it's heavy because it really holds the weight of the camera. And it's been doing a great job as we've been going through doing all, these, all this crazy bracketing stuff. Um, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and close Aurora HDR. I also use Photomatics. I've been using Photomatics forever. Um, that has been a, a favorite program over the years. So when I was doing a lot of my HDR work, but so by the way, while pulling up Kula and when you look at some of these scenes, um, some amazing 360 work done by other people. So you can go hang out on Kula for a bit and see the other work. Um, 
part of looking at Kula and Cloud Pano and all those others as we've been on this learning curve uh, for the past couple of weeks, part of the reason I decided to move toward the DSLR for doing these 360s is because of the incredible imaging that I'm seeing on some of these uh, some of these setups that people are sharing through Kula and Cloud Panel and Theasis and all these. They're doing some amazing stuff. And when you start looking in these rooms and zooming in and not having pixelation or anything, that's where you want to be. So that's what we're working toward with the interior 360s now. By the way, we've also been working heavily with the flash ambient uh, combination techniques for interiors. And we've definitely done, uh, done some really great justice to, to the... Uh, to this particular home and another one that we shot last week that i haven't shown either uh, we were down in cave creek no two weeks ago so we did a shoot down in cave creek we didn't do the um the virtual tours but we did do all the still imaging for a really nice high-end home down in cave creek maybe that'll pop up in here on here at some point in time so next week i can promise you because we're at the wrap-up point uh, here, but next week I promise you we are going to be going straight back to uh, specifically drone stuff because I am working on one of the new classes that uh, I'd gotten some input from those on my Patreon channel. So thanks everyone on Patreon and thanks for supporting the channel. It's greatly appreciated. If you like what we do here and the information that we provide, uh, consider becoming a member of our Patreon channel. It's really easy. It's uh, down on the lower right hand. Uh, you can't click on it but patreon.com slash rich charpentier. So there's my little self-promotional plug. Also, we do have several courses online at Udemy. So the classes and the patrons help to support this channel. And I can't tell you how appreciative I am and uh, how much the channel has been growing over the past couple months, especially since we started doing the live streams. I didn't know which way this was going to go. And um, it seems to be working out really well. So thanks to my patrons. Thanks to all my YouTube subscribers. And if you like what you saw today and you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit like and subscribe down below and you'll be notified of new videos and uh, new, community, uh, new community polls and things. And like I said, if you head over to Patreon and want to support the channel, that would be greatly appreciated. My goal with Patreon is to get at least 50 patrons on the channel. If we can get to 50 patrons on the channel, I'm turning all advertising off, so all the Google monetized stuff, because I'm getting sick of all the pop-up ads as a user personally. So if we can reach the goal of 50 patrons uh, per month, then I will be doing away with all of the AdSense stuff that pops up on YouTube. So I'd like to see that go away. And so, like I said, if you like and enjoy it and you don't want the ads anymore, consider becoming a patron. All right, everyone, so next week, uh, I'll give you one little hint for next week's uh, Ground Station Pro. There, there we go. That's We'll be talking some Ground Station Pro, and we'll also do a follow-up on any other interesting things that happen this week. Um, and we've got the 4th of July weekend coming up, so stay safe and stay healthy, everyone. Uh, I hope you get out and have some fun flights. I hope you get to do some fun things, and I hope that, um, you know, stay away from... Uh, Stay away from concerning situations. There we go. Do that social distancing thing and uh, keep yourselves healthy. So I don't, I don't want to know about anyone getting sick, and I'm sure you feel exactly the same way. So we'll get through this. And, uh, yeah, I know it's been a while, and everyone's getting a little twitchy, me included. All right, well, I'm going to wrap up here. I've got a couple other things to do for the morning, and then I'm going to go off and play with more exposure and uh, uh, some more flash ambient 360s and some more HDR 360s and do some more comparisons for myself because I've got a couple new ideas and a new idea just from what we were talking about here. Okay, everyone, we'll see you again next week. Have a great one. And now I got to go find that end stream button. Here we go. End.